Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Another directive has been added to Governor's executive order requiring businesses to limit hours open to the public. Also tonight, children in the CNMI won't go hungry as a service providing free food starts this week. And a letter has been sent to D.C. requesting more money for our public school system. See with us, these stories and more are next. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, installed the Docomo whole home Wi-Fi, what did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects, and I don't have to get out of my car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. My favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag like before it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes and I have to hang up and then call her back and now I don't have to do that. Okay. You know what's a good thing too is that when you come over to visit, I can give you your own password. I can assign a time limit so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour so that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. Jose and Pedro were born on the very same day. Jose liked to play sports. Pedro liked to play video games. Jose's favorite word was pass. Pass me the ball. Pedro's favorite word was pass too. Pass me the rice. Jose is retired and has both time and energy. His life is just beginning. Pedro has diabetes, hypertension, and gout. His life could soon end. Eat less, play more, live longer. Brought to you by PHI, the pharmacy you can trust. Alpha Day, Tiruwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Monday, March 23rd, 2020. We start tonight's newscast with an update for KSPN News. Starting this week and until further notice, KSPN will be broadcasting live on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with repeat airings on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Our sports segment of the show will be postponed until further notice. We will continue to bring you the latest news updates on our Facebook page, KSPN2. Thank you for your patience and continuing to stick with us through these difficult circumstances. The results for the fourth specimen submitted to Guam Public Health Lab has come back negative for COVID-19. The Governor's COVID-19 Task Force and CHCC is asking the public to stay home as much as possible and when you do have to go into a public establishment to practice social distancing. In a release from the Joint Information Center as of news time, there have been 27 positive cases of COVID-19 on Guam, with one COVID-19 related death. Also as of press time, CHCC has not given any more updates on the progress of combating COVID-19 in the CNMI. Amendments have been made to Governor Torres' Executive Order 2020-04. 
Governor Torres issued a second amended executive order 2020-04 on March 19th to continue a significant emergency and a state of public health emergency for the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands due to the threat of COVID-19. Another directive has been added to the executive order to decrease the amount of points of interaction and contact among people. In Directive 14, starting Tuesday, March 24th, all businesses that are open to the general public will only operate between 6 a.m. and 1 p.m. Outside of those hours, the businesses may operate but may not be open to the general public. In a release from the governor, it states food or beverage establishments, including restaurants and bars, may not allow consumption inside the establishment. Food and beverages may be served off-premise through delivery, drive through and curbside pickup. Room service and takeout is still permitted in hotels, and catering may continue. All public parks are closed to the public, including Managaha and the Grotto. Governor says public gatherings on beaches are not permitted unless it is couples and their children or an individual. Gas stations will remain open, but the convenience store attached to the gas station will not be open outside of the 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. hours as instructed. Failure to abide by the directive will result in penalties under the law. Starting this week, all children of the CNMI will receive free meals. Here are the details. It's called grab-and-go meal distribution, a way of providing free meals to children of the CNMI ages 18 and below, starting this Wednesday, March 25th. The grab-and-go food distribution, uh, we will be distributing food to the public. Uh, this food is, I mean, this, yeah, food is coming out from the uh, food and nutrition program uh, that PSS has um, that grant money for, it's for all students in the CNMI. Grab and Go will provide breakfast, lunch, and a snack for children in need during these trying times in response to the outbreak of COVID-19. This touches home. Really, it's food. It's one of our basic necessity, every human being. And uh, it breaks my heart to know that we do have students out there that are very dependent on the meals that we provide on a daily basis at the school. Um, we know that families are available to like food stamp and other um, other agencies like there's Guma Esperanza giving out food, um, Caridad giving out food, but you know sometimes it's hard to believe that students come to school just for that one main purpose, that hot meal that they're looking for. To and so we want to make sure that every person, every child on the island is taken care of. The sites for distribution are as follows. In Saipan, Gregorio T. Camacho Elementary School, Tanapog Middle School, Garapan Elementary School, Oliai Elementary School, Dan Dan Middle School, Marianas High School, Francisco M. Sablon Elementary School, Saipan Southern High School, Cha Cha Ocean View Middle School. On Tinian, the distribution site will be Tinian Elementary School. And on Rhoda, the distribution sites will be Sina Paulo Elementary School and Dr. Rita H. Enos, Junior Senior High School. It's one meal per child, and they have to go through. There's two ways they can get the food, through a drive through or a walk-through. The drive through a child has to be present in the car in order to get the food. Um, right now we're work we will be finding out from the US Department of Education um, nutrition program if we're allowed to give the food out without the child present and at the site uh, that is very troubling because that's a federal guideline that the child has to be in, in sight to be given the food Walkthroughs again, uh, a parent can escort their child or the child can come up and get their food and then they can walk back to their home site. Times for pickup of food will run Monday through Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Organized by PSS, Office of the Governor and the COVID-19 Task Force. At a state's meals are given until supplies run out. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell.
Also in speaking with Commissioner Ada, he states a letter was sent to Congressman Sablon requesting for more federal funds for PSS to avoid a payless payday. In looking at our records, uh, there's two uh, budget here. The appropriated budget for the year and the other one is the uh, money uh, collected, revenue collected at that mm, period of time, right? The first period or second fiscal period. And what we're finding out is that a lot of the money collected is way lower than what was projected. So what we're trying to, what we do know is that we need more money to pay to compensate our teachers and our staff at PSS. We we don't have any more funds, and we're. I am very certain that the government and all the other agencies, such as Kalili as well, Kalili Sablan's office, and also uh, Governor Ralph Torres' office, will help us. Secretary of Finance David Adelik well as looking into another source to try to help us and as much as possible to pay for our employees this will be our first, last week of that full-blown 80 hour week payment beginning april 3rd the money our hourly numbers will change from 80 to 64 and that has already been broadcast to all the uh, teachers and staff and everyone is aware of that. Any further cuts, we'll, we'll have to do another addendum and another broadcast and we have to give them enough time to make that adjustment. So we're really hoping that uh, we can, I don't know, everybody is scrounging and I, I totally understand and I know that our faculty and staff are aware of, of, of the situation. And, and I'm sure that they will work with me in as much as what can we do with what we got. A male was pronounced dead over the weekend from a drowning that occurred at Micro Beach. According to the Department of Public Safety, patrol units along with the Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services search and rescue unit responded to this scene. Around 9.56 p.m., the search and rescue unit brought the victim to shore and began CPR while transporting him to CHCC. At 10.07 p.m., the victim was pronounced dead. In Washington, D.C., a first draft of the recovery bill has been released by Senate negotiators. According to Congressman Gregorio Kalili Sablon, the Senate draft bill includes weekly payments to unemployed workers in the Marianas. Taxpayers will also receive a one-time payment of $1,200 for an individual or $2,400 for joint filers and an additional $500 for each child. This rebate will be covered by the U.S. Treasury to the Marianas. Also, $100 million is set aside in an education stabilization fund for schools in the Marianas, Guam, American Samoa, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Sablon has also asked for additional help for health care in the insular areas and is advocating for use of disaster unemployment assistance in places without unemployment insurance systems. The Commonwealth Utilities Corporation is temporarily reducing their hours starting today. In a release from CUC, it states only critical transactions will be addressed by CUC customer service in efforts to slow down or stop the spread of COVID-19. Transactions that will be entertained from customers at the CUC office include payment and token purchases, reconnections for existing connections, prepay meter applications for online or web-based meters, and termination of services. The temporary hours will be from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the cashier payments and customer service. CUC states only 10 customers will be allowed inside the CUC customer center at a time and will be asked to hand sanitize upon entering the center. Once inside, customers are expected to adhere to a six feet distance. Other family members or friends will not be allowed inside if they are not transacting business. A reminder that bills may be paid at Bank of Guam, Bank of Saipan, and Bank of Hawaii, or may be paid online at cucgov.org or by calling 
Coming up, filing taxes this year will be a bit easier as an extension has been granted. More after the break. Mom, are you sure? What about the shutters? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I had to light a whole candle. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. yeah. I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Green sea turtles and hawksbill turtles call the Mariana Islands home. They're an important part of the marine ecosystem. They are under threat and they are protected under CNMI law. Keep plastic out of the ocean. Keep vehicles off the beach. Use the sea turtle stranding hotline if you see poaching activities or if you see a turtle in trouble. Call 287-8537 and save a turtle. Mom, are you sure? What about the shutters? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I had to light a cold candle. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. An announcement has been made by the Treasury Department and Internal Revenue Service that the federal income tax filing due date has been extended. The due date to file taxes was originally April 15th, but with the extension, taxpayers can file their federal income tax up to July 15th and may also defer federal income tax payments to July 15th as well without penalty and interest. Taxpayers do not need to file any additional forms or call the IRS to qualify. Anyone who needs additional time beyond the July 15th can request an extension by filing Form 4868 or by using the link on irs.gov. Today, four passengers arrived on Saipan from Narita flying on Skymark Airlines. When the flight arrived around 2.30 p.m., passengers were picked up from the tarmac and taken to Kanoa Resort where they will be quarantined for two weeks. This is due to Directive 8 of the Executive Order by Governor Torres that states all persons traveling into the CNMI, including residents, are to be quarantined for a total of 14 days. Skymark will be suspending the Narita Saipan route starting on March 26th until May 10th. The Saipan Cares for Animals Rescue Clinic will be closed until further notice due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Saipan Cares has released that they will only be accepting emergencies for treatment in the clinic. Grooming appointments and medication pickup will continue during regular business hours. If your pet is having a medical emergency, you can call directly at 285-5448. For grooming or vaccination or medicine, call the clinic at 488-2287 during the hours of noon to 3 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Saipan Cares states you cannot bring your animal to the clinic unless you have an appointment. And for medication pickup, stay in your vehicle and call the clinic and a staff member will bring the medicine to your car. Donations to Saipan Cares can be made through PayPal or a GoFundMe account shown on the screen. On Guam, the amount of test kits that are still available for COVID-19 is unsure at this time. KUAM reports. Half a day CNMI, here's what's making news on Guam. There's still no definite answer from the Joint Information Center on just how many test kits we have left or what we started with. So I understand is that, you know, when the box of test kits arrive, it's not a set number because it's an approximate number. It's approximately can test as many people. I have to speak to our epidemiologists and our lab guys about what that exact number is.
But I was I was assured that we have enough test kits at this point. You said enough test kits. What is enough? How do you determine what is enough? I can tell you we'll make it through the next few days comfortably. Governor's Press Secretary Crystal Paco San Agustin says, however, more are on their way. Our Public Health Director Linda Pinco de Norsi, she just signed, I believe it was yesterday, a contract with DLS so that we can send more of our test samples off-island. We can send them to Hawaii. We can send them to California. So we are exploring all our options. We've also had some of the doctors here you know, present to us options for purchasing additional test kits. She adds that just recently the CDC allowed Guam to use World Health Organization certified test kits, allowing Guam to purchase test kits elsewhere. A simple drive through Tumon is proof enough that tourist arrivals are way down. Occupancy rates are plunging fast and layoffs may be inevitable. The usually bustling tourist district is a lot more quiet now and the president of the Hotel and Restaurant Association, Mary Road, says it will soon become quieter still. Through next week, we're expecting uh, numbers to go a little bit below uh, 30%. And then the week after, I'm hearing arrivals are down to about 20%, uh, down to zero. Rhodes made the sobering announcement as a guest on the KUAM News takeover of I-94 containing COVID-19 show. She says some businesses may eventually decide to shut down temporarily and others are still trying to hold on to employees for as long as they can. I think that a lot of people are just allowing people to take sick leave and then personal leave first. And that is our recommendation so that we don't have a mass layoff is exhaust as much of the sick leave and then the personal leave. Um, and then we will get the information out once we hear from Department of Labor. But as the visitor numbers continue to dwindle, hotels and restaurants will be forced to right-size their workforce. You can't just let them go and call it, uh, you know, a layoff like that. You have to give certain notifications, and there is, are time requirements for that, like 60 days. And then uh, you have to offer packages, right, or at least benefits. So we need to ensure that we educate the employers on how to do this if their employees are going to benefit from programs. Rhodes says she's working with the Labor Department to communicate federal programs that can help displaced workers. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. Labor Oversight Chair Senator Regine Biscolia announced today that Gov Guam will be applying for COVID-19 unemployment benefit grants. She says as much as $100 million will be available through disaster dislocated worker grants. Stay connected via our KUAM mobile news app, follow us on any of the social media platforms, and sign up for our weekly email newsletter, KUAM Digital Digest, on KUAM.com. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Adriana Cotero. Thank you, Adriana. Stay tuned, because after the break is your weather report. My family is on whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Since we um, installed the Docomo whole home Wi-Fi, what did you guys notice about it? When you pull up the driveway, it automatically connects. And I don't have to get out on the car right away and come upstairs to go on my phone. My favorite thing is that it doesn't buffer when I'm watching YouTube. Um, my favorite thing is that when Addy calls now, there's no lag. Like before it used to be where I couldn't see her sometimes when I have to hang up and then call her back, and now I don't have to do that. You know what's a good thing too, is that when you come over to visit, I can give you your own password. I can assign a time limit, so that I can say that you can only be on it for one hour, 
So that means you won't get in trouble from your mom. And then you can go home. <laughs> the thing that I love the most is that I can freeze the internet for periods of time so that we can enjoy dinner time like this. <laughs> Why are you rolling your eyes? So I'll turn it back on after dinner. <laughs> Whole home Wi-Fi powered by Plume. Docomo Pacific, better together. And here is your daily weather report. Today we had a high of 88, a low of 77, 65% humidity. Tomorrow, partly cloudy with a slight chance of light showers. East winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. High of 88, low of 75. Seas will be 7 to 8 feet. Sunrise at 6.18 a.m. High tide at 8.12 a.m. Low tide at 8 p.m. And a sunset at 6.29 p.m. And thank you for watching today's show. We want to give you a reminder, we will only be going live on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with a repeat of the show on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Stay safe out there and have a great rest of your evening.